Good morning and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic for your entertainment and edification. Now, one of the texts by Dignaga that we do have is something called the Hetu Chakra or the Wheel of Reasons. This is where he lays out specifically which are the kind of acceptable types of Hetu, which are the ones that are not pseudo justifications that meet all of the requirements of a of the Trirupa Hetu in a, well, it's not exactly a wheel because it's more of a three by three grid, but it's a way of identifying all of the possible ways in which a Hetu can occur in the similar cases and the dissimilar cases. So let me introduce you to this because it's a very neat little way of classifying all of the possible combinations. So we have our hey too, and we're just going to represent this with H. And then we have the Sajia. Remember, that's the target property, the one that we are trying to identify as occurring in the subject that we are interested in. So we're just going to represent this as S. Now, there are many different possibilities for how H can be combined with things that are S or things that are not S. So let me draw our lovely grid. It's these nine cells in the middle that we are interested in. So we are going to look at cases where H occurs. Now either, this is gonna be box one, H occurs in everything that is S and everything that is not S. Or it occurs in everything that is S or, and nothing that is not S. Or it occurs in everything that is S and some of the things that are not S. Another possibility is that H actually occurs in none of the S and in all of the not S. Oops, this should be number four, not number two. And this one is number five. Or it occurs in none of the S, but also in none of the not S. Cell six is the case where H occurs in none of the S and in some of the things that are not S. Finally, we have it that H occurs in some of the S and in all of the not S. Now, by now you probably can see the pattern of how we are filling in these, uh, these cells. Number eight is going to be where the H2 occurs in some of the S and none of the non S. And our last cell is where the H2 occurs in some things that have the sagia and in some things that don't have the sadia. So this is the wheel of reasons. These are all of the different types of reasons you could have. So given a target property S, you, your H, your H2, your ground property will fall into one of these categories. Now, many of these categories are not going to be acceptable for demonstrating the right kind of connection between the HE2 and the target property. You won't be able to use them to establish the presence of the target property in the subject. For instance, suppose that you have a HE2 that doesn't actually occur in anything that has the target property. So none, H uh, occurs in no S. Well, then H can't be used to establish the presence of S. In fact, you might think you could use it to establish the absence of S. So any type of reason that occurs in any one of these is going to be a bad reason. It's going to be fallacious. Now, suppose that H occurs in some of the S. So there is a connection between having the hate to and having the sagia, but we lack the negative concomitants because it also occurs in everything that doesn't have the target property. So 
it's not going to be very useful for establishing that you have the target property when there is this close combination between having the ground property and not having the target property. So those cases are also not going to give you good, uh, they're not going to give you good sorts of um, reasons, justifications. That's the word I wanted. Well, what about, so that's gotten rid of about half of our, uh, of our squares. We've got four left. Let's take a look at these. Now, what happens in the case where H does occur in all of the things that have the target property? This is good. We need this. But it also sometimes occurs in some of the ones that don't. Then we, again, we can't show the negative concomitants. We can't show that uh, not having the hay two means that you don't have the sagia, because some things that do have the hay two also don't have the sagia. But you also don't have the positive concomitants. You can't say, well, everywhere that you have H, you also have S, because in some cases you have uh, you have not S. So that means this is not going to be acceptable, nor is this one. That leaves us with two cases that H occurs in everything that has the sagia and nothing that doesn't have the sagia, and that it occurs in some things that have the sagia and nothing that don't. These two cells, so number two and number eight, are the ones that correspond to H2s that meet the trirubia H2, that have the, four, the three characteristics of an acceptable mark. So, this is cool because this is a really explicit categorization of all of the possibilities of the relationship between the Heitu and the Sagia. And the Triberipia Heitu goes through and systematically excludes all of the cells which are not, not going to give you good justifications. Now, something that might be an interesting exercise for you to do is to go back to the video on the pseudo justifications and looking at you know, things that look like they are good hey to but end up not being because they are deficient in some way and try to figure out where these pseudo justifications fit in in the other cells of the wheel of reasons another good exercise just so that you can kind of get a sense of how all of this is supposed to fit together is come up with examples of h's and s's that fit each of these categories for instance, um, if we are looking at, here, let me, let me write some things out. Let S, no, I want, I want to write. No, I don't want to put little check marks all over. Let S be um, female mammals. And let H be animal. So animal occurs in all female animals. It also uh, occurs, well, here it kind of matters how you're taking the negation of S. The idea here is that we're talking about non-female mammals. So animal also belongs to all of the non-female animals, all of the male animals. So this is why you can't just say, well, because something is an animal, it is therefore a female mammal because it could have been a male or, in fact, we can make this even more explicit. Let's make H just be mammal. So mammal pervades all of the female mammals and also all of the male mammals. So it is not a guide. You can't get from being a mammal to being a female mammal. Go through all the rest of the combinations, see if you can come up with examples for yourself. It's a good way to get a sense of when you have a good reason, why the bad reasons are bad reasons, and why it is that it really is only cells two and eight that uh, meet the conditions for having an acceptable hey to and giving you a good argument. So go off and have some fun and come back later and we will do some more of this. Take care until then. Bye.